Good morning and uh, thank you for joining me for this uh, online uh, press conference. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to affect us uh, all. Even though we have um, seen that the rate of increase is slowing down uh, in some countries, the illness continues to take a terrible toll. I want to begin by expressing my condolences to all those who have lost uh, loved ones. And my deep thanks uh, to the heroic health workers and all the others on the front lines. Tomorrow I will uh, chair an extraordinary meeting of defense ministers by secure video conference. We have just one issue on the agenda, the COVID-19 crisis. Defence Ministers will review the actions NATO and Allies are taking and decide on the, the next uh, steps. NATO has been responding since the beginning of the crisis, implementing uh, preventive measures, assuring the continuation of our uh, operations and assisting Allies in combating the virus. NATO Foreign Ministers uh, met two weeks ago. They asked our top military commander, Sarkar, uh, to set up a task force uh, to step up and speed up military support to allies in response to the pandemic. NATO allies are uh, cooperating uh, to airlift critical supplies from across the globe. Hundreds of tons of medical equipment have been donated and delivered. Allies are sharing a medical expertise and spare hospital capacity. Let me give you just a few examples from the past few days. The Czech Republic, Hungary, the Netherlands, Norway, Slovenia, Turkey and the United States have sent medical and financial support to our newest ally, North Macedonia. NATO's Disaster Response Center has facilitated Denmark's delivery of ventilators and a field hospital to Italy, and Germany's delivery uh, of ventilators to Spain. Turkey has delivered medical supplies to allies and partners across the Balkans, following uh, similar deliveries to Italy and Spain. For the first time, the unique NATO call sign has been used to facilitate the delivery of aid uh, from Turkey to the United Kingdom. Luxembourg has donated protective equipment material to Spain. Allied strategic airlift has brought crucial supplies to allies, including Bulgaria, Lithuania, Poland and Romania. US military forces stationed in Europe have been directed to provide support to allies as part of this joint uh, NATO effort. And we are working uh, to deliver innovative solutions, including uh, 3D uh, printed respirators. Allied armed forces are also providing essential support to civilian responses in our nations, including with logistics and planning, field hospitals and uh, hospital ships, transport for patients, res uh, repatriation of citizens abroad, disinfection uh, of public areas and uh, at uh, border uh, crossings. So our allies is helping to get the right support to the right places at the right time, helping our nations save lives. NATO's core uh, task remains to preserve the security of our almost 1 billion citizens. We must continue to work hard to ensure that this health crisis does not become a security crisis. And that we are better prepared when the next crisis comes. The coronavirus crisis has shaken us all and it will have far-reaching consequences for how we think about security and about national resilience. Tomorrow, uh, we will also address how to maintain NATO's deterrence and defence and sustain our missions and operations throughout the pandemic. Our forces remain ready and our work goes on. 
from our battle groups in Eastern Europe to our air policing and maritime deployments, and from Afghanistan to Kosovo. Finally, uh, we will address the importance of countering disinformation. We have seen um, state and non-state actors try to take advantage of the pandemic to spread false and harmful narratives and to try to divide us. So allies need to work closely together to identify, monitor and expose these efforts. An open and transparent press is the best bulwark against disinformation and propaganda. The challenges posed by COVID-19 know no borders. And we are stronger and safer when we work with our partners. So we will be joined uh, tomorrow by our partners Finland and Sweden, as well as EU High Representative Borrell. NATO is committed to learning the right lessons so that we can all emerge stronger and as determined as ever to protect our people and our nations. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. And we'll start uh, with taking questions by Skype. Uh, and we go first to Robin Emmett from Reuters. Robin, go ahead, please. Thanks very much, Juana. Thank you, Secretary General, for this question. My question is, given this worsening situation in Russia and with, with COVID-19, and given that uh, Russia provided uh, Italy with uh, help, are there any NATO allies uh, who are providing urgent medical supplies to Russia? And would NATO be willing to provide Russia with urgent medical supplies? Thank you. The situation in Russia reminds us of the fact that this is a truly global crisis. Uh, countries all over the world are affected, and therefore this is a, a common challenge we have to uh, address uh, together. And I welcome efforts by uh, countries all over, all over the world, including NATO allies, uh, to mobilize a global response, including working uh, with the uh, uh, World Health Organization, uh, organizing, facilitating international responses to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Um, uh, there has been no request uh, from uh, Russia. My main focus now is uh, on how to coordinate and mobilize um, uh, 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 support among uh, NATO allies. And that's also what we have tasked uh, our top mili military commander, uh, Sarkar, to uh, coordinate and uh, to uh, do. The next question uh, will be from uh, Helen Worrell, Financial Times in London. Hello. Um, thank you for taking this question. There have been some concerns that China is perpetrating disinformation in relation to this comp uh, in relation to this COVID crisis, um, and as a result, that some NATO countries need to take a more strong. Um, response, security response against China and that maybe coming out of this, we need to be more careful about including China in critical infrastructure. What is your response to these concerns? So we have seen examples of uh, efforts uh, to, uh, uh, as I say, convey uh, message of messages of disinformation. We have seen examples of, uh, of disinformation and, uh, and propaganda trying to to utilize this uh, health crisis uh, for propaganda purposes. And of course, that should not happen. And, uh, and, and one of the issues we will address together uh, tomorrow, uh, all the defense ministers, is how to respond to uh, disinformation uh, propaganda and efforts to try to uh, divide us. The best way of doing that is to provide the facts, the, the, the truth. Uh, and as I've stated again and again, uh, the best weapon we have against disinformation um, is a free and open and independent press. So therefore the work journalists uh, are doing is so extremely important, always, but especially in difficult times, in crisis as we are faced with uh, uh, today. Um, there will be a time, also our focus now is to, is to deal with the immediate consequences uh, of the COVID-19 crisis to, to help to save lives. Uh, and that's what military personnel and NATO uh, allies are doing uh, every day, 24-7. Uh, um, uh, but at the same time, we will also, <clears throat> at the meeting tomorrow, 
um, uh, start uh, the work uh, on uh, looking into the medium and long term uh, consequences. And uh, it's too early to conclude that work now, of course, but I think it's obvious that one of the lessons uh, we all have to learn uh, is, a lessons about, is a lesson about the importance of resilience. Um, and we have to look into uh, the uh, issues like uh, uh, supplies of medical equipment, protective uh, uh, suits, uh, 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 medicines, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and also ask questions whether we are too dependent on production coming from outside, whether we need to produce more of these uh, equipments in our own countries, and uh, also uh, the issue of uh, stocks. Uh, resilience is an important part of uh, what NATO is uh, doing. Uh, it's actually enshrined in Article 3 of our uh, treaty uh, that national resilience is a NATO responsibility. We have uh, baseline requirements, guidelines for uh, national resilience, including health uh, and dealing with mass, uh, mass casualties. And, um, and uh, all of these issues, resilience, national uh, resilience, including uh, how to make sure that we have the necessary medical equipment, uh, will be part of the lesson uh, learned process, which will have to take place after uh, these uh, crises. Thank you. We now have the next question uh, from Michael Winde, uh, Deutsche Presse Agentur in Brussels. Um, hello, Sektem. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, you always stress that NATO remains operable during this crisis and that missions continue. However, training um, activities in Iraq have been paused due to the coronavirus crisis. Um, so obviously, NATO isn't operable there for the moment um, for how long this pause is foreseen um, what is also the time frame um, regarding the decision to take over some troops from the international coalition um, in Iraq and how have other missions meanwhile been affected by the crisis thanks a lot it's correct that the training activities uh, in uh, Iraq has been uh, uh, reduced uh, and uh, that's uh, actually uh, very much to do with uh, not the corona uh, crisis but with the security situation on the ground. So they were actually the level of training both in NATO and in the global coalition to defeat the Daesh uh, was uh, reduced uh, also before the uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis. Then the COVID-19 crisis add to the challenges uh, in uh, Iraq. Uh, we are still present uh, in Iraq. Our commander is there. We provide uh, uh, some support to the, uh, the, to the Iraqi security forces, also actually helping them to deal with the uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis. And we have just taken the decision uh, to uh, scale up, uh, step up our uh, training efforts in Iraq, and we will uh, increase our activities on the ground as soon as the uh, conditions uh, uh, permits. Uh, and, uh, and we are ready to do so uh, as soon as, as possible. But as I said, the reason why we reduced our presence in, in Iraq was security uh, uh, conditions, uh, actually a decision taken before the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, but we will step up as soon as uh, the uh, conditions on the ground uh, permits. Uh, and, and we have made the decision to do so and also welcome the, uh, the, the, the decision by the but the German um, Bundestag, uh, the German parliament, uh, to uh, be part of this effort, that, that, that Germany should be part of the NATO, NATO training efforts uh, in uh, Iraq. Um, of course, for all of the NATO missions and operations, we have uh, implemented preventive uh, measures uh, to uh, minimize the risk for our personnel, for our soldiers, but also uh, uh, to be able to continue our missions and operations in the midst of the coronavirus uh, uh, challenges. Uh, and that's exactly what we are doing. Our mission in Afghanistan continues. Our mission in Kosovo continues uh, with some preventive measures, but, uh, but the missions uh, uh, are maintained. And uh, um, we also maintain our battle groups uh, in the Baltic countries and in Poland, uh, one of them led by uh, Germany. Uh, we, uh, we maintain our air policing uh, 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 missions and we uh, maintain our uh, naval deployments, uh, uh, including uh, in the Mediterranean and in the Aegean uh, Sea. So 
uh, NATO's uh, and most of all, we maintain our operational readiness. So, so if there is a need, NATO is able to deploy forces uh, to respond to uh, any threat and any challenge. Uh, also, uh, in the midst of the uh, coronavirus uh, crisis, so. So uh, we have adapted, uh, we have uh, implemented preventive measures, but uh, the operational readiness uh, of our troops and our missions and operations are maintained. Thank you. The next question uh, comes from uh, Sherif Chetin from Anadolu. Thank you, Secretary General. Um, you've mentioned that NATO continues to deliver its, on its core task of defence, uh, deterrence and security. I would like to ask, as you may recall, Turkey following its uh, soldiers being targeted by the Assad regime end of February, invoked Article 4 and asked for additional security guarantees. I'd like to know what the, the latest developments are regarding these. Thank you. So NATO's core task is to protect close to 1 billion uh, citizens in NATO allied uh, countries. Uh, and we do that by uh, maintaining our missions and operations, but also maintaining the, re the readiness to deploy uh, forces. So the NATO response force, the uh, high readiness uh, joint task force, and uh, and and all the other uh, uh, parts of uh, what NATO can deliver uh, uh, if 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 uh, called for. Uh, <coughs> sorry, we are uh, we are also, of course, uh, uh, supporting our ally uh, uh, Turkey. Uh, we have uh, some uh, what we call uh, we call them tailored assurance measures already in place in Turkey. Uh, Spain is delivering a, uh, a Patriot uh, battery augmenting uh, the air defenses of uh, Turkey. Uh, we have uh, AWACS uh, uh, surveillance uh, flights, uh, and we have also provided some uh, other types of uh, uh, assurance measures for uh, Turkey, increased NATO presence in uh, in Turkey. Uh, but there are, um, uh, but, but we still work uh, with allies to uh, do more, uh, and I am in constant dialogue with the allied capitals uh, to see whether we can further step up our assurance uh, measures uh, for uh, Turkey, because Turkey is uh, is an important ally for our alliance, uh, not least in the fight against terrorism. Uh, Turkey is the only ally bordering uh, Iraq and uh, and Syria. Turkey has been uh, extremely important in helping us to make all the progress we have made in the fight against uh, Daesh, ISIS. And we need to continue, of course, to work all NATO allies uh, together, including uh, Turkey, uh, 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 making sure that uh, ISIS is not able, or Daesh is not, not able to uh, return. Uh, so we will continue to work with Turkey, we will continue to to provide assurance measures, and I will continue to also uh, uh, work uh, uh, with allies to how we can further step up our uh, support to Turkey. Thank you. We will now go to Bratislava uh, for a question from Andrei Matyshak from Pravda, Slovakia. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. And my question would be, uh, does NATO have uh, some uh, some early estimates uh, regarding uh, near medium term uh, uh, decrease of uh, defense expenditures uh, in member states uh, because of course the corona crisis is also an economic crisis so so how 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 do you estimate what kind of impact it might have on defense spending thank you NATO allies have not provided any updated uh, estimates on defense spending, uh, and uh, I don't and I, I don't expect them to do so either. Because the reality is that uh, their focus now uh, is on uh, the immediate challenges uh, uh, posed by the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, their focus and my focus, uh, NATO's focus, is on how to save lives, uh, and that's exactly what we all are doing. Uh, mobilizing as much support as possible and we also seen the important role of military personnel in helping uh, 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 the civilian society dealing with a health crisis so it, it illustrates in a way that uh, the military um, NATO uh, military capabilities uh, uh, can play and actually is playing an, an important role in supporting uh, civilian efforts in uh, dealing with the health uh, crisis. Uh, what we know is that, uh, of course, there will be economic consequences of the uh, corona uh, uh, virus, uh, the, uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, crisis. 
uh, how severe these economic consequen uh, consequences will be will depend, of course, on how long uh, the uh, crisis will uh, last. Um, but there will be, and we have already seen, uh, uh, economic consequences on overall economic growth and, of course, also on public uh, expenditure. At the same time, uh, what we also have seen uh, during this crisis is that uh, the threats and challenges uh, that uh, made us uh, decide to invest in defence, they have not disappeared. Uh, there is still a terrorist threat uh, out there. Um, there are uh, uh, threats in cyberspace. And uh, we see the global balance of power uh, shifting with the rise of China, and we see a more uh, assertive Russia. We, for instance, we see continued violations of the of the uh, ceasefire in uh, in uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we see uh, Russia's uh, military presence activities in uh, in uh, in Syria. Uh, so uh, uh, the challenges we are faced with as a security alliance. Uh, have not disappeared because of the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis. And then um, the, the COVID-19 crisis also demonstrates that military capabilities, which allies have invested in, everything from airlift to uh, medivac, to medical evacuation, to, 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 uh, uh, to uh, uh, logistics, uh, to transportation capabilities, all of these uh, capabilities, military capabilities, have proven extremely important and helpful in the uh, civilian efforts to uh, fight the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Thank you. And the next question will go to Hans-Uwe Mergener from uh, Mittler Report. Hans-Uwe. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sekchan, uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for the question. Uh, I have two questions. And the first one is a little bit out of the subject of Corona. It is concerning the situation around the Mediterranean. And I, as I understand, foreign ministers agreed two weeks ago to engage more in NATO's southern flank. You enumerated Tunisia, Iraq, Jordan, the Sahel. Efforts need to be coordinated, to my mind, with the European Union, as there, were, as there is also an emphasis laid upon the same areas. In particular, it has been declared to, to reinforce the footstep of the, of the EU in Sahel. What kind of coordination do you foresee? What can we expect in terms of objectives, timelines, and measures? And my second question is more corona-related, as it will have an impact on national budgets. In previous events, you, Secretary General, defended with empathy and with emphasis that there will be no major concern. In fact, this is hard to believe. How can we cope with the situation? You just outlined your emphasis on resilience and may this, let's say, put more weight on resilience, not divert assets, budgetary assets, from the more, fi more war fighting capabilities, what we are looking for and uh, struggling so hard in NATO. Thank you, sir. First, uh, on the Mediterranean, um, uh, you are right that NATO has decided uh, to step up our efforts in the wider Middle East region and uh, North Africa. And uh, we do that uh, stepwise and we do that uh, through uh, different uh, efforts. Um, we have all decided to step up our uh, training activities in uh, Iraq. Uh, so as soon as the security conditions uh, permits, we will uh, do more training in Iraq, uh, taking over some of the activities also today conducted by the global coalition, the US-led global coalition. And Germany will be part of uh, uh, those efforts, uh, the NATO efforts, and I welcome that. So we have uh, agreed uh, to step up training in Iraq. Uh, then we have also agreed uh, to uh, do more uh, in, the, in the whole region, including uh, uh, North Africa. Uh, we have all the partners in the region, uh, partners like, uh, for instance, uh, Tunisia. And we are working closely with Tunisia to try to help them 
uh, we have uh, different uh, programs uh, where we work with them on, <coughs> on uh, uh, border security, on uh, special operation forces, intelligence and uh, so on. Uh, we also have a, a country like uh, Mauritania, which is a, 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 a partner nation. We are also discussing with them uh, what more we can uh, do. And there are, of course, uh, 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 many other partners uh, in North Africa uh, where we now are uh, sitting down and looking into what more we can do. It's a bit early to speculate about exact what kind of uh, concrete activities we will add to the work we all do, but this can be everything from you know, political consultations, political capacity building, helping uh, countries with build, building their security institutions, uh, uh, two different kind of training activities. It's a bit too uh, early. Uh, we are also looking into um, the challenges we face in the Sahel. Uh, and of course, anything we do in North Africa, Sahel, uh, the, the Middle East, is something we will do um, in close coordination with uh, other international institutions, including uh, the European uh, Union, and we only do that if we are uh, requested or there's a demand uh, for uh, NATO uh, activities uh, in different uh, forms. Uh, let me highlight that NATO uh, value the cooperation with the European Union very much. And we have been able to bring the NATO-EU cooperation up to unprecedented levels over the last uh, years. Uh, we continue to step up and we work together, for instance, in the Mediterranean where uh, the uh, NATO uh, mission, uh, Operation Sea Guardian, provides support to EU efforts. And also in the Aegean Sea, where we have a naval presence, uh, where uh, we help to implement, uh, also there is a NATO naval presence in the Aegean Sea, or deployment, where we help to implement the agreement between the European Union and Turkey, addressing the migrant and refugee crisis. So we work closely with the European Union, and that's also the reason why I welcome the fact that we will have uh, Josep Borrell, uh, uh, the High Representative Vice President, present at our meeting, together with two other EU members, Finland and, uh, and Sweden. And for the next question, we'll go to Cabo uh, Miracua uh, Popal from Tolo News. Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Kerti. My question is that that uh, we have uh, some reports that uh, Taliban have increased their attacks against Afghan forces. How do you assess uh, these attacks and uh, how much it will be harmful for the peace process? Meanwhile, what is the NATO uh, position on the Afghan Taliban prisoner swamp? Thank you. The Taliban attacks are harmful, uh, and therefore we call on Taliban to cease uh, the attacks, uh, to uh, fully implement the agreement between the United States and, uh, and the Taliban, and to reduce uh, violence. Because that's the only way towards a, a peaceful, negotiated uh, solution. Uh, and, uh, and we strongly support all efforts uh, to uh, initiate uh, inter-Afghan negotiations. We welcome the fact that uh, the Afghan government has appointed an, an inclusive um, negotiating uh, team uh, and uh, we support uh, the uh, agreement uh, between the US and Taliban, uh, which also then includes um, uh, provisions about uh, exchange of uh, prisoners. But it's not for me uh, uh, to... Uh, what, what I would say today is only that we urge uh, all parties to fully respect um, uh, the, 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 the promise to reduce uh, violence and uh, uh, make all their efforts uh, to, uh, uh, to implement the agreement and to initiate inter-Afghan neg negotiations. I also, also therefore welcome that uh, uh, NATO's commander uh, in, um, in uh, Afghanistan, our top commander in Afghanistan, Scott Miller, recently met with the, uh, with the Taliban and also the US envoy, uh, Ambassador Khalisad, um, uh, is also in close uh, contact with them to try to facilitate a peace process, uh, which is the only way uh, uh, to uh, reach a peaceful negotiated solution in Afghanistan. NATO will um, continue to stay committed to Afghanistan uh, with financial support, with our rescue support mission, with, uh, with training, uh, because uh, we believe that the best way for us to support the peace process 
is to continue to support uh, support to the Afghans. So Taliban understands that they will never win on the battlefield. They have to sit down at the negotiating table and make uh, real uh, compromises. If I then just briefly can move back to the last question, because I, I, I only answered one or two questions. So there was the second question was about <coughs> resilience. Uh, and I said, yes, resilience will be extremely important as a lesson learned after the COVID-19 crisis. There will be economic consequences, but I think it's a bit too early to say exactly how large they'll be, because that will depend on how long this uh, crisis will last. And, uh, and the threats which we are faced with will uh, or have not disappeared, uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, also they have not disappeared because of the coronavirus crisis. They are still there. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we have to make sure that we continue to be able to defend us against threats and challenges uh, uh, from whatever uh, direction. That was for the previous question. And uh, now from Kabul, we can go over to Podgorica and uh, Jovana Juricic from Daily Pobjeda. Good afternoon, Secretary General. Can you please answer my following question? Uh, government of Netherlands has helped Montenegro in transport of medical equipment from China to Podgorica. Is this the only kind of help which NATO will provide to Montenegro, having in mind that government requests from Montenegrin government requests? Thank you so much. I, I, I heard what I say, not uh, everything you said, but my understanding was that you asked about uh, uh, NATO support and uh, NATO allied uh, support to uh, Montenegro uh, and whether there could be some more. Uh, well, what I can say is that <clears throat> uh, we will discuss tomorrow uh, how we can step up, speed up uh, support uh, NATO allies are uh, giving to each other. NATO started to respond to this crisis very early. We implemented the first preventive measures uh, uh, also in, in, in January and February. And then uh, different NATO agencies have helped uh, allies uh, coping with the COVID-19 crisis, including transportation and setting up uh, different uh, medical uh, facilities. Um, and this, of course, includes uh, Montenegro. Uh, but what we have done over the last weeks is to uh, <clears throat> uh, ask our uh, top commanders, occur uh, to further step up uh, and to continue to mobilize support. Uh, and of course, that's also something uh, that is relevant for Montenegro. Uh, I think you mentioned that the Netherlands have already uh, um, provided uh, some uh, help uh, to, uh, with airlift uh, uh, equipment to uh, Montenegro uh, and uh, Turkey. Has, uh, as a NATO ally, has uh, provided medical uh, uh, equipment. And what NATO does is that we, we try to identify where uh, is there any spare capacity, where, uh, where, where do we have any uh, uh, surplus stocks of medical equipment, uh, and where do we have uh, uh, surplus uh, lift capacity, and then match uh, and that with uh, the requests from different uh, NATO allies. So that's exactly the coordinating and mobilizing role NATO has. Uh, we also use NATO um, capabilities to provide uh, direct uh, support. Um, uh, we will continue to look into what more we can do. That's exactly why we meet uh, tomorrow. Um, let me also highlight that normally when we are faced with crisis, there are one or two or three uh, countries affected by a natural disaster, an earthquake or uh, some other kinds of crisis. And then all other allies, all other countries can mobilize support to uh, the ally which is affected. Uh, this time, all allies are affected at the same time. And that makes, of course, the situation even more difficult because all allies, all nations all over the world are focused on their own national needs. Um, so what we have to uh, then uh, realize that, well, all allies are affected, but not all allies are affected in the same way, way at the same time. Not all allies are at the peak at the same time. So there is some spare capacity. Uh, there are some surplus stocks. And, uh, and then we need to mobilize that, those surplus stocks, those surplus capacities, and also fully utilize, for instance, our airlift capabilities, fill the planes, fill the 
uh, the, 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 the different, the different uh, transportation means. Uh, so we utilize them in the most uh, effective uh, way. And that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, and, um, and, and Montenegro has benefited, uh, be benefited from that. But we will, of course, continue to, uh, to constantly assess what more we can do for all allies. The next question uh, comes from uh, Irina Sommer from Interfax Ukraine. Yeah. Good morning, Secretary General. Uh, I would like to know uh, if uh, also partner countries are involved in the fight with coronavirus. Because as far as I do know, um, the biggest in the world aircraft, Ukrainian, Maria and, and Ruslan, also participating in the operation. And second part of my question is, uh, I would like to know if um, this experience uh, of uh, the cooperation with allies uh, will be taken into consideration during the assessment to grant uh, Ukraine the Enhanced Opportunity Program. Thank you. Yes, we are also working with uh, partners in different uh, ways. And we welcome the fact that NATO has so many partners and uh, that we can stand together and address common challenges as the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis uh, is. Uh, uh, and, and, and Ukraine helped NATO allies because uh, Ukraine provides uh, um, a strategic airlift, or actually there are Ukrainian planes which are used by NATO uh, to provide a strategic airlift. And I've seen these planes, they are huge, they have enormous capacity, and, uh, and, uh, and the Ukrainian uh, uh, planes uh, uh, shows in a way how NATO uh, work with a partner Ukraine uh, to provide uh, airlift for NATO allies. And, uh, and these planes have been important for over a long period of time uh, to lift uh, medical equipment all the way from China across the globe uh, into NATO allied countries uh, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, so yes, uh, we work with uh, Ukraine. We welcome the close partnership with uh, Ukraine. We are all affected. This is a common challenge. We need to uh, respond uh, in a common uh, way. Um, uh, and of course, uh, we are now uh, uh, looking at how we can further strengthen the partnership with Ukraine. Uh, the issue of enhanced opportunity partnership is, is one of the elements in that discussion. It's too early for me to conclude. But everything we do together strengthens the partnership between NATO and, uh, and, uh, and Ukraine. Thank you for the last question. Uh, we'll go to Bucharest and uh, Robert Lupitu from Calea Europeana. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, uh, what's NATO's assessment on Russia's overall conduct uh, with disinformation and military posture in the eastern flank and the Black Sea during this pan pandemic of uh, COVID-19? Thank you. Um, well, what we have seen is that um, is that uh, Russia uh, <clears throat> maintain uh, military presence um, <clears throat> uh, uh, close to NATO uh, borders and NATO uh, 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 countries, uh, including in the Black Sea. But of course, uh, we see them also um, uh, continuing to support the separatists in uh, separatists in uh, in uh, in uh, Ukraine, in eastern Ukraine. Uh, we see um, their uh, significant military build-up uh, that has taken place uh, in Crimea, uh, and uh, we see also their naval presence in the Black Sea. So this is part of uh, the, the security challenges uh, we are faced with. Uh, we were faced with them before the COVID-19 crisis, and we are faced with them uh, uh, during the uh, COVID-19 crisis, and I expect them to be there also after this crisis has uh, ha has ended. So it just highlights the fact that uh, that NATO has to be able to both provide support uh, to the civilian efforts in uh, combating COVID-19, but at the same time deliver on what is our core responsibility, uh, the protection of all uh, allies. Um, and that's exactly what we are doing, and we also have increased our presence in the Black Sea uh, region, uh, on land, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, um, the tailored assurance, uh, um, uh, so the tailored um, uh, presence in, uh, in, in, in Romania, but also 
also uh, at sea and in the uh, air, and we work closely also with partner countries uh, in the Black Sea uh, region, like uh, Georgia and uh, and uh, Ukraine. Uh, so yes, also we just have to to understand that uh, uh, the Corona crisis is of uh, is is affecting us all, uh, but it doesn't uh, remove uh, the security challenges we faced uh, before uh, the uh, crisis, uh, and that's uh, uh, also uh, the reason why. Uh, when uh, ministers meet tomorrow, they will also address how to maintain our military posture uh, and our deterrence and defence uh, uh, in uh, the uh, uh, midst of the corona crisis. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Uh, this concludes uh, the press conference. Uh, over to you for, for your, your last words. Thank you so much uh, for uh, joining me for this uh, online uh, press conference. I think this work uh, works quite uh, well. Uh, and it shows that we need to be able to work and to operate uh, uh, also in times where we cannot uh, have the in-person physical meetings, but uh, uh, using uh, online platforms to communicate. So uh, uh, that is exactly what we'll do tomorrow with the secure uh, video conference with the ministers, and that's what we do now with engaging with the uh, uh, press. And thank you for the important work you do as uh, journalists, uh, as I said, that's the best response uh, to this information. It's, uh, it's the free and independent press and uh, stay uh, safe.